So we have just heard the latest audio work of the series called Guided Choreography for the Living and the Dead. Welcome, Faye Trisco. Good to see you. Hi, good to see you. Hello. Hi. <laughs> How is it going? Hi. It's going OK. Yeah, yeah, it's going fine, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, how are you? Well, I just, um, yeah, listening to that and diving into it, you just don't want to kind of come back. You just want to linger <laughs> on in that kind of like the mm. power of the word and the audio and the, or the way your voice just turns into a whole world in itself, you know. It's just kind of want to mm. stay there for a while. Yeah, let's just stay there. <laughs> <laughs> It's not me yeah. in this reality. <laughs> exactly. Um, so this is a series that you, you've been working on. Um, mm -hmm. Can you tell a little bit when and how that started? Yeah. Um, so it started about, I, I guess, about a year ago. Um, I actually started a personal practice of, you know, in I think it, as dance makers, we're quite familiar with this idea of a guided body scan. And we're often um, taking, you know, performers are often taking very complex directions from me that are often impossible tasks. And you're using your voice to move the bodies and the bodies are doing something and then you're responding to that. And um, I was going and have been going through a lot of like, um, personal loss. And so I was actually doing this practice for myself mm -hmm. to think about um, how I could communicate with those I would lost, was had lost, and then also to communicate with myself and my own body because I had the sense that I had almost left my body. Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking about embodiment and actually the complexity of embodiment and the complexity of self and how we aren't just... Um, one thing um, and to feel a hand or to feel a part of your body in a really deep way is to actually enter a, a kind of a, a space of, of quite unknown, of unnameability, to be deeply in sensation. And so around that time, I was also starting to work on this exhibition with the Walker Art Center. And so I ended up creating a series of audio works for that exhibition um, in which the audience listened or the, the gallery goer would listen to the pieces hmm. inside a gallery with other, other people and would kind of be in this intimacy with my voice and these strange directions and then would also be asked to, asked to move and would then be moving in some choreography together like a kind of tableau vivant um, so, and then when COVID happened, it seemed in a way that these pieces had been strangely made also for this time, this time of disembodiment. Um, and I think that the voice is a way, you know, we're so visually overstimulated. So the voice is this ancient technology from which we can sort of sense and feel and know a lot about what's happening for someone. Um, you know, through the vagal nerve. Um, it's why we can, you know, listen to a, love, a loved one's voice and quite and know what's happening for them or that something's off. You know? hmm. so. so, and then of course, disappointed to not be with you, but uh, <laughs> we are improvising yeah. and finding ways to be together. And um, I, I think taking people away from their screens and into an oral experience became interesting to me. Hmm. I think it's really lovely because it's just, uh, it's kind of a trip into the unknown for a lot of people, because as you said, the dancers are quite used to these kind of techniques, um, but maybe not for everyone to uh, think oh. that this is also something that it's, it's part of uh, our art form. <laughs> In a way, it's something mm -hmm. that is not visible, but something that everybody can, through this kind of audio engagement, can experience in themselves. Um, and I think that's really yeah. enriching uh, the spectatorship um, of our audiences. Yeah, I mean, I think that 
the the sensation of a bit of disorientation of too much at once of moving from your toes to your eyeballs to your genitals <laughs> is is one that I think that the in dance practice we're often dealing with this level of dynamic and complexity but that also as a viewer inside one of my live shows you might feel yourself pulled in multiple directions um, and kind of having this internal dance of perception while witnessing the performance and so this is kind of doing that it's giving you the dance and also allowing you to perceive that in that way perhaps or maybe you're just anxious while you're listening to it I don't know <laughs> or <laughs> confused but that's okay <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, as a, uh, as a work, it just seems to perfectly continue your work before. I mean, it's like it, mm -hmm. it, it's dealing with the same issue of like, where is the, where is the, 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 the gap between the performer and, and, and the audience? And where is the performance? Where is it located in between us, exactly. in here and there? And I mean, it, ra it raises the same question that you have been dealing with. I, as I mm -hmm. think, as long as I have known your work, um, which yeah. might be from the very beginning, but you've always been involved with this, like, where is it? Where is that? When does it turn into my experience of what you are proposing? And when does it, and how do they mm -hmm. communicate in, inside the, 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 the artwork? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I've been interested in this kind of, you know, this morph between one familiar thing to another familiar thing and this unidentifiable, unidentifiable space that emerges between where you're neither in one nor the other. Um, and you're kind of left in a question, therefore. And um, yeah, I think that's really well put. I, I did this practice in creating a duet with Jesse Zaret um, where we would stand in front of each other and for hours and we would try to become the other person and we, we became very strange and like laughed hysterically and um, but as we did this we found that as I tried to become him and he tried to become me there was this third space between us that emerged that was neither him nor me and so we ended up calling that practice chatting we called that character chat and we called it chatting. <laughs> and so I think that in, in a lot of my pieces, especially, especially in the Thank You for Coming trilogy, which is sort of the last seven to eight years of my work, I've been really working on chatting with the audience, sort of creating that third space, um, like you say, Verve, and pulling that out so it becomes something actually palpable and is really this question of, how we are making our world together um, and how do we feel that we are in, in some sort of uh, participation in this, mm. in this world. Hmm. You know, the talk has kind of going, gone from us being spectators to being witnessing something and then we are participating. And mm. I feel like in your work, all of those things were always there in different ways in, that it's it's actually like the same thing we are talking about but from different angles um, mm -hmm. that even if you are lying down and hearing the voice you you are, you are participating even if you didn't do anything you, you were already participating you're already a, a, a spectator or something so I find this very interesting that it's kind of like putting together all these kind of like critical notions or um, different mm -hmm. definitions of what the audience is doing together and playing around with them and stretching them into different directions. But it's also mm. stretching the part of the performer mm. because they also mm. have to mm -hmm. be willing to go in, into this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you already mentioned yeah. um, your masterpiece. <laughs> Thank you for coming. It's a trilogy. I have read. It's called Masterpiece. That's always I what I call it. I always, I always say that. <laughs> that's you. my, pri that's my privilege. My privilege Aww. to say it, because it really is. It's, it's, it's a monumental 
work, mm. I have to say. Um, and we were thinking before that we would talk about it because it's such a, I mean, you started 2012. Yes, yeah. That's when I began the process. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, that's like a massive amount of work, a massive amount of thinking and thinking in different uh, contexts. Uh, the first one, uh, thank you for coming at the dance, which was 2014. Um, yeah. It was the first piece of yours that I saw. Um, and um, I remember being, uh, as you said, co a little confused, not knowing what I, how I would like to be in it um, as a professional looking at it from the outside with the critical eye or throwing myself into it or <laughs> or whatever oh yes in paris, in paris too right after the yes. attacks yeah yes yes so do you want to take us through this trilogy um we have also some video clips so when you want us to show some of the videos please um let us know but maybe we start from attendance um which was the first part of the trilogy yeah yeah so in att attendance we were um I was really curious how to really sensorily bring out this idea that we are all always participating, whether we are aware of it or not. And so um, that piece really brought people in through the senses and through how we moved the space around and through eye contact, through then eventual contact with the audience, through breaking apart the set, through all the sound being made live and the sound also being made often from the names of the people in the room. Um, and this one was really a question of what does it take to get people from a kind of passive state of receiving and distance to one in which they are willing to stand up. And that for me is a, a kind of political metaphor um, so yeah, maybe now we can show a little bit of the trailer of attendance of the first, uh, I think it's clip A. Yeah, that was at um, that video is from St. Mark's Church in New York, um, and uh, yeah. So this piece was really, I mean, each piece in a way is about creating a kind of contemporary ri ritual where we can sense and feel our interdependence. And so, throughout the course of the piece, things are constantly being repurposed, like the platform that you see at the beginning is kind of like a sculpture plinth that the audience sits around. Um, and then I come under it and I break it apart <laughs> and it becomes as there's a, you see that it's actually, in fact, a series of benches that I then pull out like a kind of stage manager. And then mm -hmm. the audience sits on the benches. So your butt is where 
the stage was. And so there's this, a lot of throughout these very direct uh, bodily movements that the audience is a part of. They're then they hold things that are then sort of these objects that the performers use. At one point, we sing every single person's name that is there, that is present. So it's like a calling of attendance. And then by the end, in fact, we have people up and we're all in this dance together, sort of simple skipping dance. And it's been, it was very surprising the willingness at the end that people had to join, um, really like all over the world. Um, and that we really worked a lot on knowing, knowing how to de deliver direction and request and ask in a way that was not like dictator and was not uh, what we say here, like kumbaya, like too sweet and too like la la la, but was, <laughs> was direct and simple and to, and to absolutely allow for the no in the room as much as the yes. Um, but it's been, it was surprising, especially in that piece, how much people craved in fact to the attention and the, mm. the contact. Mm. So, yeah. I think it was yeah. also built into the meeting with, uh, with the artist when the dismantling of the stage in the middle starts, you already in, are engaging in the performance. So, you know, joining mm -hmm. in the end, it's just continuation of that dialogue that you had maybe with yourself, like holding something, being there, gradually becoming part of the show, kind of being seduced mm -hmm. into, the, yes. into, the, into the flow of the performance. Um, and the last mm -hmm. part is really like a folk, uh, dance type of thing. I couldn't help thinking about yes. kind of uh, kind of like f uh, traditional folk dances where you use these stripes yeah. and you're like going around. So it had like it resonated a lot into these kind of communal ways of 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 t coming together and 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 finding a joy in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think it it's, it was interesting to feel the. The joy in that piece, which actually felt quite radical to me, uh, because I think joy is like, oh, like, you know, we're going to make ourselves vulnerable if we allow for that, you know, we're going to be, become seduced and then manipulated or yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. we're going to be unthinking if we, if we feel that together. And I think that was really an interesting thing to question. Why do mm -hmm. I think that? Why do I think that the, that art must always be only deconstructing? Um, yeah. And that radical is always with the distance. Yeah. That, mm -hmm. that to be able to critically look at something, you have to have some kind of a distance to it because here the distance mm -hmm. was gradually just getting smaller and smaller until <laughs> you were there gradually together, skipping around mm. in, in a circle. <laughs> and I have to say, oh. um, yeah, it's, but, but it, it, was, it was really like, even I, with my bad knees, I, do, I was like, I'm a little bit afraid of participating. You never know how the others are, might stumble into you. Uh, but I could feel the, the joy of it, mm. kind of like, you mm -hmm. know, coming together. And that's a very, um, that's, a, that's a skill. To, to get everybody to yeah. rely that they are not going to be made, that they don't feel fool <laughs> afterwards, mm -hmm. that they participated, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. threw themselves into, the, into mm. the flow of the dance with others. But mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, there's certain things yeah. that are taboo in a contemporary dance, maybe joy and laugh and some things are, you know, mm -hmm. being funny and mm -hmm. being <laughs> joyful. Yeah. I do all the taboos. <laughs> you do. Yeah. <laughs> because, because it's also very funny. The, uh, the, the performers are just absolutely brilliant in it and uh, making yeah, fun, fun of themselves, the reflecting of the, 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 the mm. performative selves and, and to the audience. And uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this was 2014. Yeah. Yeah. And. Yeah. And then you continued the next uh, part of. Yeah. Do you want to say? The next it? part. 
Sure, yeah. The next part is called Thank You for Coming Play, which um, which premiered in 2016. Um, in fact, right right around the time Trump was elected here. Um, the <laughs> um, yeah, it was a... It, yeah, well, it had a showing in September at Wexner, and then it premiered at BAM in, yeah, in just November. So really just a couple weeks after. Um, and so, yeah, this piece was dealing with, um, it's called play, and it, it was much more of a, of a play, of a text-based work, um, although it's really working with the interplay between I guess the dissonance in a way between what we do and what we say, between behavior and action and the kind of um, the dance of language, like the way that we are made up by our, the symbols and the, the way we name things and the way we represent things through language and the ways that we're also undone through those stories and um, the problematics of storytelling. And so a lot of this was about um, playing with language and the audience was in some ways helped write some of it. They, they fill out these note cards uh, that are then used in the work. And a piece of it that was really fascinating to me that we did was we tried this whole section where we recorded one conversation between us, all the dancers, and they learned all the exact phrasing and choreography and did it exactly and actually even said a lot of that original text, but also simultaneously said a different set of text. So it was like this really wild, impossible task, <laughs> um, which I think you see a little bit of in the trailer, but not as much. But in this one, we were also working a lot with kind of archetype and again, like, tableaus from various paintings and images so a lot of the times the image will be different than the text which will be different than the body is then doing and the sound is doing and we formed a band among us so all none of us were really trained but we formed a band and learned the instruments and um it was a wild process <laughs> um but maybe we'll show a little bit of that now that trailer or it be
So this is the most theatrical one mm -hmm. of the three pieces. It mm -hmm. felt like some kind of a theater in theater, the meta theater, and then everything mixed and layered on top of each other into this mm -hmm. wonderful chaos, which kind of make you also love theater, which you sometimes are like, oh, can I take it anymore? <laughs> but the way it was structured, it's just kind of like, it split it open and it, it just put it together in the, in, in the wrong way, uh, which made it more interesting. And then it split open again. Uh, I remember, uh, enjoying that <laughs> tremendously. <laughs> so it was really yeah. Yeah, it was. It's about theater most of all, like mm -hmm. for me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's about performance and theater, and the performers are all you know wearing these thongs, basically backless, and so they had all all these costumes that they were making themselves. But when they turned around, you just see their butts, you know, which I think is very much like <laughs> the facade, <laughs> the front of theater and frame. And, yeah. And then the second half becomes much more intimate and layered, but it's still kind of fractured and breaking apart um, our language. And yeah, a lot about how we're very mediated now in our language and in our performance. So... Yeah, I, I remember we were singing. Am I wrong? Yeah, you were singing in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't just, yeah, it wasn't just a bad trip. No. <laughs> you were singing. And, um, yeah, the audience begins sort of chanting with us the various phrases that are repeated throughout the work. And then throughout the piece, they are also kind of like a chorus, like a Greek chorus in, in you know, traditional theater, you're, you're cast in that role throughout this work. I miss, it, seeing these pieces is making me just sad in a way, I'm missing so much. Um, touching the sweaty back of one of my performers, and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> running through the audience wildly. That yeah. I remember. <laughs> I, I remember <laughs> your presence somewhere behind me. Yeah. Giving the two. Yeah, so... In each of these pieces, I'm there and I'm directing and I'm um, stage managing and I'm kind of a control freak, out of control audience, out of control direct director jumping up, doing too much and demanding too much, and which is pretty appropriate to me as a maker. Um, so it's interesting because in space, the next one, then I took away all the performers and it was just me kind of this alone solo director with the audience um, and took, taking really kind of stripping away a lot of the color and the um, audacity and, you know, jouissance of those other pieces and kind mm. of it, moving into this very white and empty space. Um, and the audience really became like this, they became this place in which I make the piece, you know, with them. They make the, they, they, they hold me in this absence in a way. Um, was it meant to yeah. be a solo when you, when you were thinking about the trilogy, was it clear that the last piece will be a solo? It, no, actually it wasn't. I, I thought that the, Initially, I thought the first would be a dance, the second a play, and the third an installation. And so I was thinking that the installation would involve performance in some way, but that it would be um, a, another group ensemble work. And after I had made those two pieces, um, and then it, it, I had I'd gone through major life changes like death and divorce <laughs> and I felt like I couldn't quite function in the same way that I had in um I I, really, I literally just kept not scheduling rehearsals <laughs> I was like I want okay I have to get it together like we're gonna we're gonna make the whole plan and then I would just it was like a fatigue came over me I think and I and I realized slowly oh okay this is 
this has to change course. Um, and, and it has to be something about this, what's happening with me right now. Um, and so that was, you know, it was frightening to allow for that, but I, I, always, I never wanted to make a trilogy that was rigid. It had to meet the moment and be alive. Otherwise I think it becomes too much of a chore that you're involved in. So, so, and then it became quite interesting to me to remove all these people and to see what was, you know, what was there with just me, which I don't actually love that position. It wasn't something I craved, all eyes on me, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so it was quite uncomfortable. Um, but it was really about the mapping of absence and it really being quite close to the process of, of, of um, someone dying and um, the concurrent loss and change that happens to you at the same time in the one living and the one left. And how do we map those absences and what is a figure through not sight, but through all the other senses and through memory um, and in a way the impossibility of resurrection or recreating them ever again um, and the attempt to kind of hold, hold one's grief, be held in the loss and hold their, their being in you. And, um, and then really how is, how can there be a ritual for absence and grief and loss that is, uh, that is among others because it is such an isolating and private thing often. Mm. But it is the like you know the our great commonality is this mm. experience, <laughs> right? So. I mean, it's it held its installation uh, feeling mm. from mm -hmm. the original idea, so Absolutely. it was staged to very much like an uh, an installation. And uh, I wonder if you want us to have a yeah, let's piece. play yeah, yeah. Perfect, you were there in the trailer. I know, <laughs> I saw myself. <laughs> I didn't realize that until just now. <laughs> it's uh, so fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, this is, this. it's such a strong statement to be there, just to share that space with you and that it becomes so, the air comes so thick somehow mm. in that space because we are like in a in this space together and and it's full of your labor mm. of grief and pulling through something pushing through something and um uh, this was the work actually that we were supposed to show here yes and we it's will Hopefully we'll be there next year. <laughs> exactly. This is yeah. this is really like rubbing salt into the wounds. I'm sorry. It really sometimes <laughs> feels like maybe yeah, we should just come back next year. But yeah, <laughs> but like, yeah. Let's just kind of, skip over this year. <laughs> I know it's it's kind of bittersweet, but it's still worth of uh, of, of of a short talk about it. Um, mm -hmm. Because it's so, it, in some ways, it is so different from the two two other parts. That the playfulness is is n is not there in the same way. As I said, it's more like labor, um, yeah. and and it becomes this different kind of materiality. Whether it's real material like a clay that you are, or or these big bricks that you are, which are obviously very heavy, and you're putting on your body, and um, you cannot really look at that without starting to. To, to mm. feel it in your own body as a spectator. Um. Mm. Yeah, I, I 
initially I wanted to create these sensory stations where I could recreate the, uh, you know, the exact sense of pressure on the chest um, or the kind of like sob or the, um, or the touch and the feel of, of the hand of their hand or um, the weight um, yeah, the weight of their body or the, the kind of like sense of um, thickness of skin and the slam of, of a kind of rage and um, the bitterness and the, yeah, sort of how do I hold all of that and how is that, how is that held or mapped by others? And it's how is what feels so invisible made visible? Um, in, in not in a linear way, in a kind of a painterly way, like a painting with without the paint, though. <laughs> like, so I was also looking at like a lot of figurative painting throughout history and looking at the ways the body was held and represented all those bodies, which are now ghosts, which are which no longer exist and thinking a lot about, um, you know, what is a what is a body and and just how it's not what we think it is and how um, how it's been held in memory throughout time. And anyway, I, I was looking at that. And so the piece actually has this um, line of images that you walk through to get to uh, the piece itself, um, which are sort of like walking through a cave or a procession to the stage and then throughout the piece I'm also in reference to those ghosts hmm. yeah, and yeah. The, there's a pulley system that the audience is holding and um, I really need them throughout the work uh, hmm. yeah it's also uh, weirdly um Current. I mean, somehow it's just kind of like it also mm -hmm. resonates this this time, which is about pandemic and loss and uh, like or, or let's say hate and sense of it, because uh, maybe this is us in the Western world who are more maybe for the first time experiencing this kind of uh, fear and uh, and loss um, in a different scale yeah. than what we are used to and. Um, it's a, it's, it really is a pity that this is actually the work that people would really, I think it would be like mm. a cleansing, it has a cleansing effect on when you, when, mm. when you are there um, through this grief and through this, maybe it's because of the materiality, because it's something like it's, it becomes real, mm -hmm. that you can work mm -hmm. through something. It's, uh, it, mm. it's a really, um, it's a really lovely experience with all the heaviness of it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I hope that, you know, when we are back in theaters that that people will, I, I will hold their hands <laughs> and I uh, will touch and I will lay on the ground with my mouth and <laughs> I'll do all these things and it will feel so good and so liberating and... Um, and maybe we'll taste it differently because we couldn't have it, you know, maybe we'll, yeah, we'll know things anew and be able to really advocate newly for the world that we want because it's so, we're in such a liminal time where it's being, you know, stripped and shifted. I hope we're not just grabbing, you know, at some sort of security, but that we can take this vulnerability and, and, and uh, learn from it and change how we are in some way together. Mm. Yeah. I think we are all hoping that, uh, you know, this, these takeaways that we talk about, um, we don't forget them once we get back into the business as usual, um, which of course yeah. we are all waiting to open our theaters and studios and rehearsals and uh, residencies and it's a it's a whole world that is is in a halt right now um also uh, unfortunately your um your solo museum exhibition was also uh 
yeah. had to, to stop in the middle. Um, do you want to say something about uh, that? I mean, that's was, um, it opened in February in 2020? Yeah, it opened in February in 2020. It was open for two weeks before, and it was meant to be open for five months, which was very exciting to me because, you know, as performers, we'll often have this week run or a two-week run and to have a work in the world for that long. So we put a version of it online, which you can go and do, um, yeah. which I'm quite happy with. And and now I'm thinking about the future of that work, whether that's in, you know, um, uh, other galleries or it's in um, COVID safe spaces mm -hmm. outside or done in other ways, because I'm really curious to continue it. Mm -hmm. And these guided mm -hmm. choreographies I'm going to keep working on and sharing in different ways. So, um, yeah, I think that, you know, it's interesting, the, this process of adaptation, um, I think it's like we, we must adapt and we must also be very mindful about adapting too much, <laughs> I think, you know? <laughs> and so like too quickly or too much, like how do we actually really, um, you know, stay connected and yeah um yeah I guess I'm just thinking like I don't I'm not interested in losing the the live space but I'm interested in these all these different ways that it can happen and I think that is a lot of what we're working we're learning now mm -hmm. is sort of like these you know spheres and circumference like waves and circumferences of connection that we can create um mm -hmm. But yeah, I will be the first one in the theater when we're back open also. So, But yes, the, the live, the come on in is on the Walker Art Center website. It's an online experience. And so please go to it and spend time with it. And there's images of the exhibition, um, which I'm quite happy with how it looks also from the outside. So, yeah. Would you like us to take a look into how it looks we have uh, a yeah, video sure. Let's it. look at well, what, well, we can watch this clip. Yeah. Yeah. Oops, sorry about that. We <laughs> couldn't find it anymore. Uh, it was the last minute ah, adding, okay. so I'm sorry about that. Yeah, that's okay. We can, we will have it. You can go to the Walker website. Exactly. I also have, I think, it on my website. Easy to find. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was yeah. uh, the 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 maybe the takeaway from that was that it was nice to see people lying and being in this kind of beautifully. Uh, um, arranged rooms where you could really enjoy the the flow of the the, the, the text and the and the audio yeah. description so um, yeah I think everybody had their own experience today so maybe that's all for the better that's what they they remember from this evening their own uh, interpretation of like what they and how far they want to go with your instructions and yeah. invitation. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm very curious what people experience. So if anybody wants to write me or send me a note um, through my website, please do. We are all here together and yet then we all disappear and um, we don't even know who was there. So <laughs> I'm used to brushing at least shoulders in the lobby and feeling the energy. And, yeah. Yeah, that's, miss, that's, that's the pity now. But, yeah, um, I miss you. Yeah, we miss you too. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. I mean, I think thank it's you. about time to say thank you for you yeah. to take us through this uh, so much uh, work of yours, and uh, which we hopefully will see soon live somewhere near here. So, um, yes. Say, I thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. 
It's been a long way for us to try to get to I know, Berlin. we've been talking but, for so long. But I'll yeah. see you next year. I'll see you next year, yeah. I'm confident. We will. Yeah. We'll come back. We are not going yeah. anywhere. We will come back. We will yeah, dance yeah, again. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> so thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Take care.